from Earth investigation, we have found that uh, some toxic waste such as e-waste or plastic waste have been imported in large quantities to Thailand. And for a lot of these waste uh, are mismanaged in Thailand, meaning that they are recycled in um, improper ways. They may be just piled up and burned. Uh, this is because in Thailand um, that we still lack proper system, proper political system to control uh, the management of waste. At the same time, we lack the technical capacity or the funding uh, and the governmental budget to really properly deal with this. And this is why uh, it's important to uh, kind of stop these waste imports. So the toxic uh, contaminants in these e-waste uh, from things like persistent uh, organic pollutants uh, can seriously harm their health. Uh, but we have people who work without gloves, uh, work on these waste without gloves, and uh, burn waste with only just kind of normal medical masks, which is not enough to uh, stop these toxic pollutants. Um, some of them, uh, before our work, we realized that some of them didn't know this because of uh, lack of knowledge. At the same time, there are some who knows, a lot actually who knows, but because of uh, economic hardship, uh, they have to do these jobs. Some of them were living here before the waste come in, and as soon as the waste comes in, this is the only job that they now have. And even though they realize the health risks of this uh, job, they can't stop. When we went to uh, Koksa sub-district in northeastern Thailand where an entire village is operating on e-waste without proper protections and burning e-waste, uh, we interviewed some of them and we find that many of them have breathing difficulties. Uh, they have uh, one, of, one, one of the young girl uh, we found some uh, a long time ago, she, she, she had heavy metal in her blood as well. And these toxic pollutants are being breathed in it's, uh, and then it's going into the body and as we mentioned, it's persistent organic pollutants. Uh, it stays in the, the body and the environment for a long time. Uh, we also found dioxins in eggs in another e-waste site in Samutsakon and again like if people eat these eggs, then the pollutants stay in them. Uh, these kind of toxic uh, substances including things like uh, dioxins can have serious kind of health risks in the long run. We have discussed with some environmental lawyers on this and Thailand lacks, seriously lacks a baseline data in terms of health of the, its population to properly monitor how much kind of pollution is impacting our, the, the population health. And because we also don't know how much pollution is, be, is being released from these places because the companies aren't forced to release this information to the public, we are just in the dark and the monitoring is just more difficult in that sense. So, for example, in places like Hoksa'at, you know, we have local people who lived there before the, the rise of this kind of dirty recycling business and they are forced into these kind of jobs. And we see this as well in Samutsakon and in some other places where you have small scale you know, e-waste uh, operations. In these cases, we see that locals don't have a lot of choice. Uh, uh, sometimes they do have the choice, but uh, it is the kind of econo eco economy of it, you know. There's a question, of course, in terms of health and economic kind of the dilemma there. Uh, uh, in my personal opinion, I see many of them who would have had better jobs if uh, there, there was no big supplies of e-waste. I feel that in Koksa Art in particular, it's interesting how you see the increasing amount of waste due to um, unsustainable consumption, both from the kind of more developed parts of Thailand, but at the same time also from the first world, from the global north, so to say, when you have increasing consumption there, those waste flow down the chain. So it creates a condition where these individuals have to adapt to that situation. Before, one, one of them said that, uh, it's an interesting anecdote, we were in the dump site where they're burning e-waste. And then I asked the person, so why would you do this job? And where were you before? And they said, I live here. I was a farmer here before they constructed this dump site. So what we're seeing here is, yes, I guess if you take away the dump site, he would lose this job. But you also have to take into account that the dump site itself had taken away his livelihood and it wasn't from him, it wasn't from that village, it was from much abroad, from other places, from people who are more, far more privileged than this person. We have uh, one village in the eastern province of Shashun Sao which was affected by two recycling factories uh, just kind of constructed on the roads uh, and her farm is right there. She spent a lot of money to build a water well 
uh, for 30 years, she could use that well very well, but then after the, we later found heavy metal in groundwater, uh, and because of that reason, now she can't use the water, and she asked, why is it that for a long time, the community can live well, and then suddenly these waste come from abroad, and all of a the sudden their livelihood is turned upside down. Now they have to buy water from, from outside, they can't plant uh, anything, and this is not just in one village, it's actually many, many tens of tens and thirty communities around Thailand are facing this kind of dirty recycling prob problems. When it comes to policy, I guess, on a national level, a strong domestic circular economy in developed nations can help to reduce uh, what we might call waste colonialism, where basically developed nations are relying on developing nations with much less technologies, much worse governance in terms of waste management, and much less uh, funding and uh, money to destroy their waste. Uh, but in reality, I think, I believe that a lot of EU countries, I've seen uh, videos and on the how do you re recycle waste in Germany. Uh, they have proper laboratories, they have closed system. I think that kind of system can, can be implemented there. In Thailand, we have none of that. So a strong domestic circular economy in those countries with proper systems could really help improve the situation over here. Personally, I don't believe that individuals should be should bear the burden of this kind of problems. I think it has to start with policy level. It has to start with corporate responsibility changes there. Individuals can help, I guess, to live more sustainably, maybe just simply using less plastic, using uh, things until they really wear apart and then buying new things. Um, those kind of simple things I think everyone knows. But the fact of the matter is, uh, I think there are social and economic factors that mean that means that we can't always uh, avoid plastic, we can't always avoid these kind of ways. So that's why policy change is necessary first. And then at the same time, individuals can always help. Every country should be able to manage their own ways. Uh, there should be a domestic circular economy to reduce the problem of environmental injustice that comes with waste colonialism. If each and every country can manage their own ways, then you have a proper system where there's no issues of waste trade coming from rich to poor countries and everything. So it's all about, uh, hopefully there would be some political change in individual countries as well to uh, create a more just system.